Thank you, Lord, for the strength you give to simply carry on through life's toils and tests and the worst and best. I'm not ever left alone. You're always right beside me. You hear me every time I pray. Since I first began, you've been my dearest friend. I will give you all the praise. I will continually for each day I live new grace you give oh I'm blessed abundantly I can't forget that moment when in my life you made such a change since the spirit came I've not been the same I just want to give you I just want to say that Same Jesus, He is 
dive into John chapter number 13, I, I want to go backwards for a moment, and uh, I want to read this verse to you again, and elaborate on where I was, felt like the Lord was wanting me to go last week, on Proverbs chapter number 22, verse number 1, you don't have to turn there, because we will stay and remain in John 13, the Bible says a good name is rather to be chosen than great riches and loving favor rather than silver and gold. That verse is, is captivating. It's, it's convicting. To be able to think about what our priority is in life, that a good name is rather to be chosen than great riches. And you ask yourself, what am I choosing? What's the number one thing that is in my life? What, what is it that matters most to me? Not if I was to stand behind the pulpit or take a microphone or be able to have an opportunity to stand before thousands of people. The question at hand is not who you tried to be and who I tried to be just publicly. It's what our heartbeat is privately. To be able to know what matters the most because... It's what's private that we choose that makes up our priorities. And because of our priorities, we'll manipulate, dictate, we'll, we'll rather, if you will, it will lead what we are publicly because a lot of times we always want, our, want to make a difference, but sometimes we don't know how we want to make a difference. And I think I've said it before and I'll say it again that I wonder if this was our last day, what would you or would I be remembered for? There's a lot of things that I dare don't want to go back down the path that I was on last week but or the week before last. But I want to ask you, what would you be remembered for? And maybe I should say it this way. Even after a week of hearing what the Word of God had actually said, to be able to think about the opportunity that you and I have day to day, every moment that we live, every minute that we have, every hour that we spend, every day that we see the sun rise and the sun fall and the moon rise, we wake up the next day, put in the yesterday behind us. What do you choose for tomorrow? What's number one on your life? Is it the thing that's on your calendar? Is it the thing that's on your business list? Is it something to do with just your family? And I believe you ought to be faithful to your family. But it, what matters the most to you? What is your single priority every single day of your life? One man said this when I was talking to him, and it's been a few years ago. 
He said, I look back, he said, there was seven years of my life that I never one time, ever, one time, ever told somebody about the Lord. He said, you want to know the greatest thing that I learned during that time? He said, I learned that every day for those seven years that I never made my mind to get up and tell somebody about the Lord. And the reason why I never told somebody about the Lord is because day to day I never chose to. And what he's saying is this, is whatever you choose today that matters is going to be the very thing that matters to you. And it ain't just about church, and it's not just about going around and singing and preaching. It's about living your life to where people know, and not only people, but God himself know that you love him above all things and all people, that God is number one in your life. Everybody's asked the question, do you want to make a difference? Well, some people try to take the humble approach. Well, I'm not really trying to be anything significant. I don't want to be known. And I don't care if you're a young person, old person. I don't care how long you've been serving the Lord. I don't care how long you've been saved, how much Bible you know or you don't know. Listen to me. You can be street smart and I'll hook up with you for a minute. Or you can be Bible smart and I'll hook up with you. And let me just pull you both to the middle. Whether you like it or not, your life is making a difference in somebody else's life. So I don't care if you're a Bible thumper or whether you're just a street smart person. I'm telling you, whether you choose to make an impact on this world or not, your life will still make an impact on this world. Now the question is, what kind of impact are you making? And if you want to make an impact in the world, listen, you notice the life of Christ. Of course, He changed everybody. But He all started when you all go backwards. You can't influence the world unless you influence those around you. And sometimes you can't influence those around you because you don't take the one that God gives you. If you remember, it was Jesus that took Peter by the hand. Did you hear what I said? He took Peter by the hand. Some of us want a platform. Some of us want to be able to do something big. But we're not interested in doing the things that are small. If we would learn to do something and be faithful in the small, believe it or not, God might be able to trust us what was big. Amen? But the question still is at hand. What kind of influence are you choosing to make? We read last week talking about the lady by the name of Mary. The Bible says in the text that we read that she was a certain woman. And I say that because when you think about what she'd done, the Bible says very plain in that gospel that everywhere that the gospel would be said, her story would be shared. I'm talking about for the rest of eternity. Can you imagine what that must be like? How Jesus could see something that you and I do? Listen, that seems to be insignificant to so many others. But God says, no, that's a big deal to the kingdom of God. That's a big deal to the people that want to follow the Lord Jesus Christ. And the Bible says that wheresoever the gospel was preached and wherever it was taught, that very thing thing would be shared and other people would know about the life that she lived. I want to ask you a question tonight. What is it that's in your life and my life that is so great to God and pleases God so much that he wants so many people to be able to know why? Because it brings him so much honor and glory. Maybe the second question would be this. Do we even have anything in our life that is that magnificent? Are we really doing anything that even seems to be almost comparable to be able to know that God would want to talk about something because it was so humble and it was so sacrificial and it was so much of a surrender that we did that. But the Bible says that she was a certain woman. You want to know why she did it? Because it was Mary. Now listen, I'm not meddling, I'm preaching. It was Mary. Why is that significant? Because she was the lady that worshipped the Lord. There's some people that's willing to give God more because they truly worship the Lord the way they should. There's a lot of us that we don't give God nothing. We don't give God time. We don't give God our, our, our money. We don't give God our, our talents. We don't give God anything. Why? Because we say we worship the Lord, but we're not at His feet as much as we say that we really are. We come to church and it's hard. It's like pulling teeth to get somebody to serve the Lord. But you find somebody that spends time with God on a regular basis. Somebody that wakes up every single day and goes to bed every single day and they talk with the Lord and they depend on the Lord. That's somebody that's willing to give not just something and not just a few things, but everything in your life. And you want to know why? Because they have a trust that you and I don't have because they spend time with the Heavenly Father. You want to know how you get to learn to trust Him? Spend time with Him. Amen. You'll learn to trust Him when you spend time with Him. And the more you spend time with Him, the more you trust Him. So the question at hand is this, why did she do it? 
Why did she do it? What did she do? i tell you what she did. The Bible says that literally she was helping prepare him for his death. That's what the Bible says in verse number 1 of that chapter I read last week. You know that seems to be something irrelevant, but you know this? Everything that you and I do is preparing somebody for their death. Because you know what? They're going to look at your life and they're going to say, wait a minute, should I trust Jesus or not trust Jesus based upon what they do? You say, no, 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 that's insignificant. Our dirty mouth, our rotten attitudes, our Facebook status, our videos that we post, and our pictures that we post. I'm not trying to get in your business unless the Holy Ghost wants to get in your business. Hey, but many times we always want to be able to please God. But the truth be told is we don't understand that everything we do is always preparing somebody for their death. Now, I want to ask you a question. Where are you leading everybody? Where are you leading everybody? Where are they going when they look at your life? The Bible says that she came and she broke that alabaster box to prepare him for the time as he was about to go to his death. But you know why she really gave what, what did she do? She prepared it for it. But what did she really do? She gave everything. So I want to ask you tonight, what do you want your name to be? I think one of the most humbling things that I could ever imagine and even think of on a day-to-day basis, really honestly with me, folks, and it's almost overwhelming at times, even more so now than ever. I don't know why, but it is. And sometimes I go through seasons like I'm going through now. And I think about how every day is, is a day that's a day that God's given. And we're never promised tomorrow for anything for that matter. For your wife, for your husband, for your children, for your money, for your fame, for your position, for your title, for your nothing. Whatever it is that you have or you don't have. Listen, it is by the grace of God that you and I still have it. We're never promised anything tomorrow. And I think about it all the time, thinking, you know, if that's the last day, the last chance, the last opportunity, how do you want to be remembered? How do you want to be remembered? What, what's the best thing that somebody can say about you? Well, I want to say this, that no matter what we do, our life is influencing somebody. The greatest example that I can show you, and I want you to just look for a few minutes, if you will, is in John 13. I want you to follow along with me, if you would, tonight. John chapter number 13. I'm going to read a story that seems to be very, very, very popular, I know, to many of us. We're going to start reading, if we could, in verse number, we're going to need to start in verse number one, if we could. Now, before the feast of the Passover, notice that, before the feast feast of the Passover. Jesus knew that his hour was come, that he should depart out of this world unto the Father. Wait a minute, stop for a second. He's thinking about his last moves. He's thinking about what matters. If you knew that this was your last night that you lived on the face of the earth, what would you do? The Bible says that Jesus sat here and he begins to think as he should part out of this world unto the Father. Listen, as having loved his own which were in the world, he loved them unto the end. Boy, you talk about something to be known for. I want to be faithful to the end. Somebody say amen. You know why he could go on when he had a bitter cup? Do you want to know why he could go on? Though people betrayed him and mocked him and denied him. And listen, friend, don't get quiet on me because think about it. There's a lot of people that hurt us. There's a lot of people that cut you deep. There's a lot of people you'll depend on that you can't depend on. And then something will happen. You think, why in the world? Why, 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 why? And for years, months, sometimes decades, we get so hung up on the why, 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 why. When the truth be told, if we understood that Jesus went through the same things that we went through. And we would just be about our Father's business. There's no telling what God can do in our life. But the Bible says that Jesus loved them to the end. He finished the work that his father wanted him to do. If there's anything tonight that ought to be the heartbeat of you and me, as a father, as a mother, as a man, as a woman, whatever it may be, it's to finish what God wants you to do. Now, that leads me to another question as a meddling, if you want to say it that way. Do you even know what God wants you to do? Well, Brother Jason, you tell us that the will of God is not a destination. Okay, it's a journey. So I want to ask you something. What did you do today in your journey? Did you talk to him? Did you pray? Did you read your Bible? Did you call somebody? Did you encourage somebody? Did you witness to somebody? I mean, if we're going to pedal, if we're going to meddle in these things and we're going to get down to the nitty-gritty, we need to really think about the significant things that seem to be so simple that everybody looks over. Listen, if you want your life to matter, then it needs to matter now. Everybody says, Well, I know it's going to matter, Brother Jason. That's going to matter at the end, let me say this to you. If it matters at the end, it matters right now. If it matters at the end, it matters right now. 
Quit thinking that we got another day. The Bible says, if you notice in verse number 2, and supper being ended, devil having now put his heart into Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, to betray him, Jesus knowing that the Father had given all things to the hands. And he was come from God and went to God. Listen to this. He, being Jesus, rising from supper, lay aside his garment and took a towel and girded himself. After that, he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet, wiping them down with a towel wherewith he was girded. The story goes on, and he has a conversation with Peter, which we'll get to. But I want you to go on down a little bit further, if you will, and get down to verse number 15. For I have given you an example that ye should do as I have done to you. Verily, verily, I say unto you, the servant is not greater than his Lord, neither he that is sent greater than he that sent him. If you know these things, watch out, you're going to miss this right here. If you know these things, that's where we usually stop. If you know these things, happy are ye if ye do them. Why are we so unhappy? Why is our life so meaningless? Oh, I know. You got money in the back bank, got a 401k, everything's good, family's right. That's great. Praise the Lord. I'm happy for you. Why are we never content? And I'm not preaching to the sinner. I'm preaching to the saint tonight. I can promise it. It ain't the world's fault. It, we're, we're, we're as busy or busier than anybody else on the face of this earth. The tragedy is it ain't busy about God's business. And he said, happier ye, listen, if you do these things. The word happy means be blessed. Now, I know there's a lot of things, and I'm going to use the term funner, and just forgive me tonight, just share my heart the way the Lord put them. I really don't even have an outline. I've got a lot of things written down, but I ain't got an outline. Because it sits on me sometimes to be able to think about how we give ourselves to so many other things. But yet we still don't find contentment. And listen, you could do a lot of things in the house of God and still not be content. But that's because we're doing so many other things and we're so busy and so consumed and so overwhelmed that we forgot the reason why we should do what we do. Listen, I don't do and you don't do what we do because of somebody else. We don't do what we do because somebody puts our picture up on the wall. We should not do what we do simply because somebody recognizes us. You and I ought to do it tonight because we love the Lord Jesus Christ. And when we're talking about a good name, listen, thank God for the way that Mary was and thank God for the way that she gave all when she broke her alabaster box. I praise the Lord that she prepared him for his death and thank God that she took the time to do it. Listen, when it mattered, by the way, thank God she took the time to do it when it mattered. But one of the greatest things that you and I must know today in this hour that seems to be so dark, when things are crazy, when it seems like there's confusion in the world, we don't know what to tell our children, we don't know where to lead them, we don't know who to trust, we don't know what's going on sometimes in the White House, I don't care who you voted for, we don't know what's going on in the schoolhouse, it don't make no difference, it don't care if it's a public school or a Christian school, there's a lot of things that are chaotic today. How in the world do we ever make sense of it? How do we make a difference? I'll tell you what you do. Never get away from the way that Jesus lived, and the thing that Jesus Jesus done on a regular basis was he lived his life to be a servant at all times. If you want to know how to make a difference in this world, you don't need a platform. You don't need a pulpit. You don't need a Sunday school class. You don't need to have a bus captain and you don't need to have a title or a role. You don't need a bank account that's beyond everybody else's. All you need to do is make up your mind that not only am I willing, but I'm okay. I'm satisfied to be a servant. To be treated like a servant. To be unknown like a servant servant, to be put down like a servant, to be mocked like a servant, to get dirty like a servant. If we need anything, we need servants in the house of God. We're so busy. We're so busy. We're trying to get and trying to keep up and trying to do. And listen, I'm in the same seat as you. 
stretched from one end to the other end, trying to find contentment, trying to be able to make the greatest impact, whether you say you want to or not. We want our life to matter. Why? Because Christ lives inside of me. I don't want the glory. I want my life to matter because I'm a vessel for God to use. That's why I want my life to matter for His honor and His glory. The only way we can do it is have the mind of Christ. And that means to be humble and to be a servant. I want to ask you tonight, if you, not your friend, not your neighbor, not the person sitting beside you, would it rate you on a scale of 1 to 10 on how well you serve and love and sacrifice for others? And not only how well, but how often. Not only how often, but how much. Don't lose me. Not only by how much, but how diverse. I wonder what you would rate yourself as. Does your master who receives your servant have a certain title? Do they have a certain status quo? Do they have a certain name? Do they have a certain background? Do they have a certain race? Do they have a, 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 certain, a certain group of people they run around with? What kind of people are you willing to serve? Because the Bible says if you want to be happy, you've got to do these things. Do what things? You've got to be willing to serve. So I want my life to matter. Well, just learn to serve. Well, I don't want to serve there, and then you don't want to serve. Somebody say amen. I hear that all the time. Well, I don't really, that, ain't what it, that ain't what I had in mind. Well, that's the thing. Let this mind be in you, which is also in Christ. I can promise you, if it was not for the love of God, there was no way in the world that Jesus should have come. But the Bible says that he did not come to be ministered to, but to be able to minister. He came to be able to give his life as a ransom for many. The Bible says that he came to seek and save all that was lost. Jesus came to where we are so that we can be set free. And that's why we have what the Bible says in 2 Corinthians 5, 21. For he hath made him to be sent for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in Him. If it was not for Christ and what He done, we would have no hope tonight. we got to make our mind up whatever God wants. By the way, God, that means whatever you want me to go through. I'm, 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 I'm in the text, I can promise you. We, whatever you want me to go through, God, I'll go through it. Whatever I need to learn, to, just take me wherever, however, to whomever you want me to go to. But Lord, let me learn. Let me learn. Let me know. I don't want to be emotionally stirred, God. I, I don't want to be pumped up. I, I, I don't want to feel good about everything. God, I want to have a servant's heart. The Bible says that Jesus had got up and rose. Literally, that he took off. The Bible says in verse number four, rising from serving, lay aside his garment, took a towel, and he girded himself. And after that, he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet. Now, I will say this tonight. I've preached on this text before, and I had a bunch of men up here, and I washed their feet. But due to the ugliness of their toes, I decided there's some things the Lord don't want you to serve at. Can I get a witness? <laughs> if I ever come up here with a chainsaw, you know that I'm going to be washing somebody's feet. And I'm not going to say no names about being a deacon standing up in the back with his work clothes on. All right? I'm just kidding. Amen. I'm going to just share these simple things that matter to me. I want you to notice in verse number one. These are very simple about just being a servant. This, this is what's challenged me. Walk with me, if you will. I want you to just see how Jesus lived. I know, how, I know you know how he lived. But I want you to see it in this text right here. The Bible says that he can come, that he should depart out of this world into the Father. Listen to this. Having loved his own which were in the world, he loved them unto the end. You want to know how to be a servant? You got to live like a servant. You want to know how to live like a servant? Listen, you have to give like a servant. You want to know what to give? Look at me. Not your money. 
not no specific thing. If you will love people, you'll give the greatest thing that you could ever give somebody. Love them. That's how you live. He was perfect, but you and I aren't. When you take somebody in your life that you know is not perfect and has made mistakes, but when you know that their love is real, you'll overlook their faults because you know their intentions. The Bible says in verse number 3, listen to this. Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands, and that he was come from God and went to God. Look how he lived. What do you mean by that? Look what the Bible says, how he came from God and went to God. You know what that means? Look up here. You want to be a servant? Live with purpose. These are simple, simple thoughts. Now, that's a deep well, and I could chase that for a long time. But I want to ask you, what's your purpose? And if you can't answer the question, I would dare say that you don't know what the Bible means in verse number 17 and know what it is to be blessed. Because you've got to have purpose in life. And purpose is not chasing every dream. Purpose is not where you were. Purpose is not the job you have. It's not who signed your check. Purpose is not making people laugh, and it's not being seen. Purpose is what are you doing that makes you content in your relationship with God? You want to be a servant, have purpose. Do what you're doing for a reason. Do what you're doing because of a vision, not because the preacher says so or your friends say so. Listen, the greatest people that you see serve in the church are people that are serving because of a purpose. They don't quit. They don't complain. They don't whine about what people say and what people don't say. And I don't want to chase those rabbit trails, but you know what I'm saying, friend. You know, it's amazing to me how many adults, and I'm saying this with a humble heart, how many adults that I can pick up on what their true servant spirit is really like because they want to complain about different things instead of just moving on. See, when you got purpose, you realize you don't do it for them, you do it for him. You know what my greatest flaw is, one of them? Is I've tried to band-aid a lot of people even though I knew they'd done it for them and did not do it for him. Everybody wants a ministry. Everybody wants to help. Everybody wants to serve. Everybody wants to do something to be able to know that their life matters, but they don't realize that there's people that's sitting around them every single day. You know what I've learned? If Taylor came to me or Cameron came to me or Christy came to me or Brother Paul came to me and they tell me I want to do something, you know, you know what I've learned? I need to look at the people closest to them because if they're not impacting them, they don't need to have something for God to use them in a different capacity because they can't be trusted in what they got. We always think we can serve when we get there. What about here? And if you want to be used of God and you want your life to matter, you've got to have a servant's heart. Make a difference in those that are right beside you. Quit trying to be somebody bigger than who you are. I'm preaching to myself. Amen. Just be you. There's people that are watching our lives every day. And we think so much about the big picture that we forget that if we would just live with purpose. By the way, he might be the next Clegg Howard. Amen. Amen. He could be the next Clegg Howard. Be the next Larry Walker. Be the, I mean, who, that, you just never know the life right. you're influencing. Yes, he lived with a, with a work ethic, and I hate to say this, but I have to point it out. He didn't just have his purpose. He didn't just have love he's willing to give. But look here. Walk with me. Verse number four. This is how he lived. 
He riseth from supper, laid aside his garments, took a towel, girdeth himself. After that he poureth water into a basin, began to wash the disciples' feet, and to wipe them with the towel wherewith he is girded. Now I can go through this whole story about how he got dirty, what he did, the people he was washing, but I don't want to do that. All I want you to see is this. He did something. He did something. He did it. And he finished it. It's just finished. You got people sign up all the time to do something. Three weeks into it, wonder where they're at. Amen. I want you to listen to his words. Verse number 6 and 7, listen to this. Then cometh he to Simon Peter, and Peter saith unto him, Lord, dost thou wash my feet? And Jesus said unto him, What I do thou knowest not now, but thou shalt know hereafter. He spoke in a way that the people around him were literally amazed. And literally it humbled them. I wonder if what you say By the words you speak, the people are humbled by what you say that's in your heart to do. Of course, none of us feel worthy. He was amazed. The Bible says after that, notice if you will in verse number 8, Peter saith to him, Thou shalt never wash my feet. Jesus answered him, If I wash thee not, thou hast no part with me. Listen, he was stubborn as a mule. Don't raise your hand, but I will for you. We all know somebody stubborn as a mule. But even when you have a servant's heart and you're humble, your words with the work and the leadership of the Holy Ghost can take a stubborn heart. And they'll submit because of the love of God that's in your life. You say, they don't want to listen to me. Maybe, 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 maybe you want to be an all-star, but you don't want to be a leader. See, everybody wants, everybody wants power. Everybody wants authority. Everybody wants to be a leader. I'm, I'm a servant. I'm a servant. No, 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 no. And you can't get nobody to do nothing. Maybe it's because you're not as humble as what you think you are. I want you to notice in verse number 9 what he says. Simon Peter saith unto him, Lord, not only my feet, but also my hands. And my head. You know what he did? Look here. Because of the way he spoke to him, he spoke with such a power and authority. Mr. Deborah, will you come? I'll give you one more thought in a second, I'll be done. He, such, he spoke with just power and authority. Look here. He said, Lord, don't just do that, do everything. Do everything. I want you to notice his wisdom. The Bible says, go with verse number 12. So after he had washed their feet and he had taken his garments, he was set down again and he said to them, Know ye what I have done unto you? Call, ye call me Master and Lord, and ye say, Well, for so I am. If I then, your Lord and Master, have washed your feet, listen to this, ye also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have given you an example that ye should do as I have done to you. He had such wisdom, and here was his wisdom. Deep point, you ready? He knew that if he was really going to make an impact, He had to be the example. You know what we need in Haynes Baptist Church? Even on a Wednesday night crowd, my prayer is, it's my prayer. Examples. Just examples. Or somebody can walk in and say, I wonder how I can do that. Look at so-and-so's life. You'll see a walking work of grace right there. 
This, look, look at how they live. Look at how they speak. I remember so-and-so used to have a temper. Yeah, but look at him now. Look at that example. Look at that example. And by the way, you know what he taught by that example? To live, you first must die. You see that? That's the example. To live, you first must die. You know why some of us ain't really making an impact? So we ain't died to self yet. We're holding on to way too much, friend. Holding on to way too much. Too worried about what people think about us. Too worried about what so and so is going to say, or if we're going to fit in with this crowd or that crowd. Or... But just have a servant's heart. Just love on somebody. That just somebody else don't want to love. And you know, there's going to be other people. But you know why I've noticed that some people get upset? Because they're ignorant to what the truth is. If they knew what the truth is, they know we're not, we're not trying to condone. Just because somebody comes in here or does something or somebody's in your life, that don't mean you're okay. But we could teach what the Bible does when the Bible says that Jesus looked at the lady that was caught in adultery. Go and sin no more. Amen. You could draw a line, but you don't have to condone the sin. Man, you love on these people, but what happens is sometimes, listen, and I'm done. When you try to do something for the Lord, it's going to be unusual. And it's not going to sometimes make sense. But you know what? Here's the way you look at it. It might not matter to nobody else. And I'm just using him by example because I brought him up. But it'll matter to him. You know, I've seen a lot of our people go to the altar when that man got up here and preached. You say, yeah, but that's in vain. Listen, you've been around the independent Baptist too much if that's what you say. If you're preaching the Word of God, it's the Holy Ghost that does the work. It's not the man. It's not the man. He come here and poured his heart out. People got some help. and Man, he emptied himself. And somewhere down the line, he didn't take in as much as he put out. Amen. Something happened. I'm just asking you tonight, what do you want to be remembered for? Father, help us tonight in Jesus' name. Amen. As the pastor, I want to thank you for viewing our video today. However, if God's dealt with your heart, we do not want to end this video without giving you a chance to be able to accept Jesus Christ as a personal Savior. If you're there today and God's actually dealing with your heart, I want to remind you what the Bible says, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. That means every single one of us has had problems, issues, sin, failures, faults in our past. But the great thing is this, is that Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man coming through the Father but by me. There is a way to be able to have hope, to have eternal security within the Lord Jesus Christ, to be able to know that you're saved by the grace of God. Now the great thing about the Bible is it tells us about the love of God. He says, for God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth Him shall not perish but have everlasting life. And that's amazing to a lot of people, and they can quote it. But the beauty of it is this, is the very next verse tells us the purpose of Christ. Because the Bible says, For God sent not His Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through Him might be saved. That means that God sent His Son to die for those of us who are sinners so that we can have fellowship with God Himself. Now, if you're there today and God's really been dealing with your heart, I want to ask you this question. Do you really believe that God's been dealing with you about salvation? If that's the case today, then I want to tell you what you need to do is repent of your sins. You need to die to yourself. Admit that you're lost and you're on your way to hell. And then look at what the Bible tells us, that He tells us that we can be saved through Christ. Who do you call on? There's only one. As the Bible says, neither is there salvation in any other, for there's none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. It's only through Christ and Christ alone. So I tell you today, would you trust in Christ? I want to ask you would, you, would you trust in Him as a personal Savior? You say, Brother Jason, I don't really know if I can do that. Well, let me tell you, the Bible also tells us that whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. It don't matter who you are, where you come from, God sent His Son to die for everyone. If you've made this decision today to be able to trust in Christ, to be able to die to yourself, to, to be able to start living for Christ and accept Him as a personal Savior after repenting, would you do us a favor and be able to contact us at 336-788-0551 and let us know about this decision that you made so we can start praying for you. Thank you so much.